Hoş geldiniz. Etkinliğimize zannediyorum başlayabiliriz. Ben sözü sunum direktör yardımcısı Mert Umut Özkaynağı bırakıyorum. Buyurun Mert Bey. Okay. Uh, hello everyone and uh, welcome to today's session. Uh, first I would like to introduce today's presenters, uh, Dr. Morteza and Dr. Koray. Uh, Dr. Morteza is our full-time researcher and his interests are microfluids, cavitation, multi-phase flow in confined geometries, ultrasound and acoustic droplet vaporization. Dr. Koray will be our next presenter. He is our full-time technical specialist and his research interests are energy storage systems, electrochemical detection, impedance spectroscopy, and adsorption kinetics. Dr. Morteza will talk on physics and applications of microscale cavitation, and Dr. Koray will be giving information on energy research infrastructure, resources, and services at our center. We would love to hear from you, so please put any questions into the Zoom text box on the right side of the screen. I will convey these questions to our speakers. This presentation is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel. So, Dr. Morteza, could I ask you now to please start your presentation? Uh, thank you very much for the kind words. Um, yeah, I can start presentation. So uh, I'm Morteza Orvani, a researcher at uh, Sabancı University Nanotechnology Research and Application Center. Uh, I graduated from Sabancı University in 2016 and then undertook a postdoctoral work uh, at KTH. Uh, and last year I joined uh, Sunum as a principal investigator in the field of microfluidics. Uh, I worked on uh, cavitation since 2009 from different perspectives from uh, these injection engines to biomedical applications and that is mostly on the physics of the cavitation in micro scale and also material science mostly. Uh, so today I will talk about the uh, cavitation as phase change phenomenon, uh, its physics in micro scale and also the applications uh, which you are interested in. Uh, the cavitation uh, is a process from nucleation to collapse, actually, and it appears in the form of bubbles. Uh, so, uh, simply talking about the cavitation means the size of bubbles. Here you can see some tiny bubbles inside a droplet, which we recorded in one of our experiments. Uh, the size of these bubbles is uh, about 3 micrometers. Uh, the cavitation bubbles are accurate uh, when the static pressure of the liquid reduces to the uh, vapor pressure of the liquid at constant temperature. Here in the phase diagram, we can see a horizontal line and vertical line. The horizontal line corresponds to boiling when the vaporization happens uh, due to the uh, temperature increase while the pressure is constant. And this vertical line corresponds to cavitation, where the uh, temperature is constant and pressure is reduced. Therefore, the phase diagram, according to this phase diagram, two main uh, mechanisms of vaporization uh, are happened due to the boiling and uh, cavitation. There are two types of cavitation, uh, hydrodynamic cavitation and acoustic. In the hydrodynamic cavitation, it is the geometry responsible of pressure drop. And in the acoustic cavitation, this is the pressure wave responsible of the pressure drop. During the hydrodynamic cavitation, as you can see here in this figure, uh, the cross-sectional area of the channel is suddenly reduced to um, some microchannels like this or nozzle, we say. And the static pressure of the liquid uh, suddenly reduces exactly here at the uh, entrance of the microchannel. The population of these cavitation bubbles and also the <clears throat> their behavior uh, for the movement from the entrance to the outlet uh, are depending on the pressure drop features uh, between the upstream and downstream pressure. 
during the uh, acoustic uh, cavitation, uh, it is the external device, for example, piezoelectric or transducer, which uh, makes this pressure and accordingly uh, cavitation bubbles are generated and further it is collapsed. As I said, the cavitation bubbles um, are generated in a very small sizes, then <clears throat> they grow in a successive cycles and reach uh, an unstable size. And finally, with an inward jet, the cavitation bubbles are collapsed and shock waves are generated. During the collapse of a single cavitation bubble, uh, the temperature and pressure of the interior are increased uh, very sharply. So this is the main feature of the cavitation process, uh, which is used in different applications. Uh, I mean, the energy uh, produced uh, during the collapse of the cavitation bubble. Uh, at the first glance, cavitation is considered uh, as an undesirable mechanism because of its erosion potential. Uh, and in the first years, it is uh, considered uh, as this uh, disadvantageous uh, mechanism, mostly in the ma uh, turbo machinery ma uh, machines. For example, uh, here you can see the operation of a pump during two years and in a very short time after six months, uh, the impeller of the pump is eroded simply, and after two years, uh, the impeller is simply in the, uh, it is not in the working condition. And depending on the material of the pump or uh, the intensity of the cavitating flow, the uh, pump can be easily torn. So at the first glance, we can say that cavitation is uh, um, is an undesirable mechanism, but by years, uh, this erosion is considered uh, as an uh, advantage because uh, the erosion is used in different applications, for example, in the surface cleaning. Uh, nowadays, the cavitation is a powerful mechanism in the cleaning of the surfaces due to the forces produced during the collapse um, applied to the contaminants adhering to the surfaces to the substrates like metals or glass. Uh, it is also used in the uh, biomedical applications, for example, in the kidney stone erosion or abnormal tissue treatments. Uh, rather than the erosion of the cavitation bubbles, uh, we are trying to use the uh, energy released from the cavitation bubbles as a main feature uh, of this phase change phenomenon. It is used in different applications, in different dis disciplines from mechanical engineering to chemical engineering to optics, for example, sonar luminescence, is a science in which the uh, emission of light is uh, used after the uh, collapse of the cavitation bubbles. Or in the disinjection engines, uh, the spray under the effect of the cavitation is used in order to enhance the atomization process. Here you can see the uh, atomization process uh, under the effect of the cavitation inside the nozzle. So simply the uh, penetration length of the uh, spray under the effect of the cavitation is increased and therefore the performance of the combustion is increased while the emission is reduced. Therefore it is very very important parameter in the uh, enhancement of the uh, performance for the design injection engines. These are just some kinds of the applications uh, for the cavitation in terms of desirable. Uh, there are lots of other applications like this from chemical luminescence to other sciences. Uh, we contributed to the spray under the effect of cavitation with several studies. For example, we developed a flexible uh, cystoscope in order to, uh, to study the fragmentation of the uh, urinary stone based on the hydrodynamic cavitation as an alternative uh, to the uh, ultrasound cavitation. Uh, here you can see the spray at the outlet of the nozzle and also uh, the transferred bubbles at the outlet and its effect in the cone angle of the spray in one of our experiments. Uh, this uh, study, this experimental setup constitutes three main parts. Uh, first one is the hydrodynamic cavitation part, which uh, includes uh, different tubings and valves, uh, liquid container, and also a uh, high pressure tank. Uh, the micromanipulator housing uh, cavitation probe, 
biomedical camera, tendons, uh, in order to tune the micro uh, manipulator, uh, and also suction tube in order to collect the residuals after applying the cavitation, uh, cavitating flow to the kidney stone, and also imaging uh, system in order to visualize the cavitating flow. Here you can see the cavitation inside the channel and also the spray under the effect of the cavitation uh, at rather low upstream uh, pressure. During, the, uh, during this study, we tried to bend the micromanipulator, the flexible micromanipulator, in order to target the cavitating flow to our uh, kidney stone. Here you can see that this uh, cavitation probe can be easily find the kidney stone with the use of um, biomedical camera in a successive cycles. After doing the experiments, after applying the cavitating flow to the kidney stone, uh, we found that it is possible to reduce the size of the kidney stone <coughs> by the means of uh, cavitating flow, by the means of actually hydrodynamic cavitation, because it is done uh, by, by the ultrasound. And we are proposing this as an alternative for the ultrasound. Uh, beside, the, beside the size reduction, we can see the erosion on the sharp edges and corners after the uh, cavitation application. Also, we, we, we extend the potential of the cavitation in the energy harvesting. Uh, so we try to convert the, um, the energy, the thermal energy uh, produced by the cavitation bubbles to other types of energy. So the cavitating flow is applied to a surface to an aluminum plate as the target, and the temperature on the surface is measured with the, uh, with the, with the aid of thermal camera. Uh, our uh, results show that the temperature uh, of the surface uh, is increased um, significantly for the miniature scale uh, devices in a very short time. So it can be used in maybe in future for uh, as, as a power source for the uh, consumer devices. So here you can see the temperature uh, profile uh, on the surface of the aluminum plate by increasing the pressure and after increasing the pressure the temperature of whole uh, aluminum plate is increased and this increase is corresponds to uh, some power at the uh, at mini miniature scale uh, required for the miniature scale devices. Uh, so up to here I, I tried to talk about the uh, feature of the cavitation mostly in an spray, but now it is uh, time to go uh, to micro. But before going to micro, it is uh, better to, to identify in which scale we are talking about the micro. Uh, it is the uh, scale spectrum uh, for the microfluidic devices uh, presented by Nam Trang and Nguyen uh, as one of the pioneering si scientists in the field of microfluidic. Uh, and as we are uh, studying the cavitation in micro channels, micro needles, and also in micro reactor, uh, we choose this range for our micro channel dimension from one to 900 micrometer. And so therefore in all of our studies, the width and diameter of the micro channel uh, is, uh, is varied between one to 900 micrometer. So by uh, gaining the knowledge from the uh, spray characteristics under the effect of the cavitation, uh, it can be extended to the microfluidic and study the cavitation uh, in a single microchip. Uh, this image, which, is, which reminds the uh, special administrative region in Hong Kong as the skyscrapers, is a simple uh, SEM image from the surface of one of our microfluidic devices, uh, which is coated by uh, non-silica uh, in order to, to have super hydrophobic devices. Uh, so the uh, basic configuration of the device uh, includes the uh, inlet zone and then micro channel and then extension part or extended channels followed by the micro channel. The cavitation phenomenon is studied uh, inside the micro channel and also in the extension part in order to, to get into the physics of the cavitation. Uh, 
Accordingly, our approach in the microscale hydrodynamic cavitation physics uh, is depending on different uh, parameters. Some of these uh, factors are listed here, for example, with of the microchannel, uh, which is the main, uh, which is one of the main parameters in the geometry. Uh, different methods for the surface roughness um, are studied in our experiments. <clears throat> Also, we are <clears throat> also we believe that the sidewall roughness uh, would uh, have a very critical effect in the creation of the intense cavitating flow inside the microchannel. Therefore, the sidewall of the microchannel above the, the, uh, and also below the, um, the cavitating flow uh, are totally rough uh, according to the to the patterns. Uh, which we are created and also novel process flows because we are interested in reducing the, uh, the reducing the cost the fabrication cost and also increase the uh, performance of the microfluidic devices therefore novel de process flows are seeking here um, durability is another parameter which is very very important for us um, we are trying to say the whole uh, cavitating flows inside the microfluidic devices from laminar to turbulence. Therefore, uh, the fabricated devices should be um, high pressurized and we withstand very high pressure. Also, novel designs by uh, getting into the cavitation in a single microchannel, uh, we can extend the knowledge to different uh, geometries and also uh, parallel, for example, parallel microchannels uh, because. Uh, in, in, in the preliminary uh, experiments, we found that it is uh, in, the, in the parallel microchannels, uh, we cannot uh, tune the same cavitating flow in the single microchannel. So, uh, it is not very easy to tune the microfluidic device just according to one parameter. Therefore, uh, we always uh, try to study the physics of the cavitation in micro scale according to uh, more than one parameter. For example, with sense surface effects. Here you can see the extension part in this figure and also in the right, you can see the micro channel. The surface uh, of the extension part is the, the roughness uh, in the extension part is about five micrometer and the width of the micro channel is varied from 75 micrometer to 50 micrometer. The intensity of the cavitating flow, these twin, twin cavities, um, is, is very stressed here for the smaller micro channel. However, the penetration length for the twin cavity um, is longer compared uh, to, the, to the smaller micro channel for the larger micro channel. Also, here in the plane surfaces, uh, you can see that the inception is awkward uh, at lower upstream pressure for the larger microchannel and a more intensified cavitating flow is recorded for the uh, smaller microchannel. All of these data, we have a very huge database for the creation of the cavitation uh, inside the microchannel. All of these data show that uh, we can tune the microfluidic device according to our uh, desired uh, problem according to our requirement, which is very important. Um, you cannot find a very, uh, I mean, widespread phenomenon which can be used in <clears throat> different applications. So it is possible to tune your um, uh, microfluidic device capable of generating cavitating flow uh, by the use of uh, these novel uh, configurations. Rather than surface roughness, we are interested in the sidewall roughness also. Here you can see the sidewall roughness, um, the height of, and also length of the uh, sidewall roughness are visible here because it is large enough to see with the naked eyes, but here you cannot see it because the height and uh, the, the length uh, are very, very small. So the uh, appearance of the cavitation is very intense for the smaller and shorter uh, sidewall roughness, but for the uh, larger one, we cannot see the same pattern. And interestingly, we don't have any cavitating flow for the uh, cavitating for, for, for the microchannels covered with uh, with the 
with the cyber roughness all over the micro channel. Uh, therefore, it, 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 it can be used in, in some applications where uh, the cavitation is considered as an undesirable um, uh, phenomenon. This cavitation number is a non-dimensional number, uh, which indicates the intensity of cavitation. By increasing the uh, cavitation number, the intensity of the cavitation uh, reduces. So here, simply for the plane surface, uh, we cannot see um, considerable cavitating flow inside the channel. However, by reducing the cavitation number, we can see the cavitating flow pattern. Uh, I mean, super cavitation for relatively low uh, upstream pressure and velocities. We also studied the working flows effects uh, on the physics of cavitation um, due to the surface tension because by reducing the size from conventional scale or macro scale to micro scale, the most important parameter which affects the flow is uh, surface tension. So working fluids are very important in different applications. For example, perfluoro droplets, or we use perfluoro pentane in this study, which is stabilized by cellulose nanofibers, uh, are used um, as the working fluid in, the, in a suspension uh, at a certain uh, concentration and introduced to, the, uh, to, to our microchannels, um, which are modified with the use of artificial roughness. Accordingly, we found that it is possible to, um, to fill the whole length of the channel with vapor voids or super cavitation here at very, very low upstream pressure. We cannot see the same pattern for water, for the case of water at the same upstream pressure, which means the, the significance of the surface tension uh, for creation of the cavitating flow. So again, it is possible to use the similar working fluids with the similar features in order to, um, to, to intensify the cavitating flow. The same pattern is possible uh, for the extension with the strong rotating vortices too. Uh, so up to here, I tried to, to, to state the physics of cavitation according to some parameters that uh, we are studying in our experiments. Um, now we can use these uh, huge database and knowledge uh, in different applications. For example, in the deagglomeration of the nanoparticles, we use the, the cavitating flow to increase the stability of the nanoparticles and also to deagglomerate the uh, nanoparticles. For example, the uh, agglomerated nanoparticles is introduced to the restrictive elements or microchannel simply. The cavitation bubbles are generated inside the microchannel and by collapsing the cavitation bubbles, it is possible to disperse the nanoparticles, the agglomerated nanoparticles in the extension part. Uh, according to this, uh, it is possible to reduce the, to, to, to increase the erosion ratio by decreasing the uh, cavitation number or increasing the intensity of the cavitation. This is done <clears throat> due to the interaction between the um, between the liquid jet uh, and also shock wave after the collapse of the cavitation with solid interface of the nanofluids. So after the experiments and the DLS measurements show shows the uh, considerable decrease in the mean diameter of the agglomerated nanoparticles. It is one of the applications of the cavitation, um, which, is which is used mostly in the, uh, in, the, in, in the acoustic cavitation, but we try to use it in the uh, cavitation on uh, hydrodynamic cavitation on chip. Uh, rather than the uh, deagglomeration, uh, we are interested in using the bacteria deactivation in the removal of the microorganism. Uh, there are two types of nucleations, uh, homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation. In the heterogeneous nucleation, um, it is the solid particles or roughness which are responsible of the uh, void sites. And we believe that having the bacteria in our suspension uh, would enhance the heterogeneous nucleation in the flowing of the fluid. So we try to, to uh, investigate the bacteria deactivation with the use of cavitating flow in microfluidic devices. 
accordingly, the flow, the, the decapitating flow uh, is um, studied for, for two main uh, patterns as the inception and the supercavitation. So uh, these two uh, patterns uh, were, uh, were, were visualized at lower upstream pressure compared to the deionized water. Uh, we did the experiments uh, with, at different cycles. After first round, if we didn't see any significant decrease in the population of the uh, bacteria. However, after 15 cycles, we found that there is no any bacteria in our solution. Uh, these, after the post-processing, we found this uh, the, the um, reduction in the viable number of the viable colonies, uh, which is very very important. It is significant for us because mostly uh, in the uh, bacteria or microorganism disinfection and deactivation, mostly hybrid reactors are used. I mean, hydrodynamic cavitation together with, for example, ultrasound or a membrane filtration are used in order to totally disinfect the, um, the medium. However, we, we showed that with the use of this high pressurized microfluidic devices, uh, and just with a single microchannel, it is possible to uh, deactivate uh, the, these colonies in a very short time. Uh, I think the, all of these 15 cycles were done in just 10 or 15 minutes. Therefore, it is promising a method for other applications which we are interested in future. Uh, so up to here, I tried to uh, to explain our applications related to the hydrodynamic cavitation in microfluidic devices. N we are also interested in the acoustic uh, cavitation too. So acoustic droplet vaporization um, as a important feature of the acoustic cavitation is assessed for the perfluoropentane droplets. Uh, here you can see the effect of the uh, cavitation on the purple or droplets after the exposure of the cavitation uh, with uh, SEMMH. Uh, this acoustic droplet vaporization is a phase change phenomenon like cavitation, uh, which the phase changes occur between droplet to vapor due to the excited ultrasound field. Typically during the ADV or uh, acoustic droplet vaporization, the size of the droplets after the exposure of the ultrasound is increased by three or six times. Uh, and accordingly, uh, we did all of these experiments in different mediums. For example, in the opticel, you can see that after the exposure of the ultrasound, uh, the population of the larger micro uh, of larger uh, droplets, uh, which is uh, switched to the to the bubbles, um, is increased. Also, we did these uh, experiments in the counting chamber and also plastic tube. Accordingly, the uh, normalized number uh, and also volume distribution of the droplets suspended in the water uh, are increased after. Uh, the exposure of the ultrasound in a very short time. Uh, in, in the future, we are uh, interested in using the cavitation, uh, mostly hydrodynamic cavitation in microfluidic devices in different uh, medium, in different applications, for example, wastewater treatment. Uh, based on the bacteria uh, uh, removal, um, it can be uh, combined with the ultrasound and also membrane filtration. Uh, it is sustainable and cost-effective uh, method uh, which we can use in the wastewater treatment. Therefore, it is promising also and we are trying to investigate uh, the, the, this, this uh, application in future too. Also, the, to the nanomaterial exfoliation, mm, nowadays, uh, there, there are different methods uh, for, for the exfoliation of the 2D nanomaterials, but we are proposing the hydrodynamic cavitation and chip for the exfoliation of the uh, 2D nanomaterials because we think that with the use of only pure water, it can be possible to totally exfoliate to, to the nanomaterials. Maybe it can be combined by ultrasound in order to, to, um, uh, to have more uh, intensified uh, cavitating flow. Uh, 
So thank you very much for your attention. Um, I hope uh, that this was useful for you uh, because I think that cavitation um, is a phenomenon which is widely used in different applications and it should be investigated uh, widely, uh, particularly in Turkey because we have a wide access to water and we need just water for the hydrodynamic cavitation. Uh, it is cost effective, uh, sustainable, it is green energy and uh, we don't need to, um, to put lots of money for this application. Uh, so I would like to thank my collaborators um, from all over the world, uh, my, my PhD advisor, Professor Kosha, uh, and also other scientists from uh, and also my students at Cavitation and Interfaces Research Group, which uh, makes life easy for me. Uh, so um, the presentation will be continued by uh, Dr. Koray Dönmez. Uh, he will uh, present the representing Dr. Monteza, uh, before starting uh, to Dr. Koray's presentation, maybe uh, we should ask the to audience if they have any questions. There's a, a button that if you raise your hand, we can open your microphone and you can ask questions. And then we can start to the next one. Are there any questions? Yes, uh, I think that uh, maybe we can uh, have the uh, questions at the end of the meeting, or if you have any question, I can. Uh, yeah, maybe because it's, it's now you already you know summarized and explained in detail in every application. So maybe some questions. Yes, um, be right, uh, you know, for I mean, right time for this period. So any questions? I don't see any questions. My question would be like uh, you just uh, present many applications. Uh, which one do you think is close to the market for daily use? I mean, there are uh, studies, I mean, between TRL level from maybe two to six, is right? Am I right? Or uh, it also, you know, uh, covers the basic. Uh, studying and also you are also looking and working for the application uh, for the product but which one you think is the closest one to the market? Uh, I, I, we, we, we are thinking that wastewater treatment is the uh, most important. Uh, Waste? Okay, your voice is not clear. Can you just... No? Yeah, it's better right now. Uh, I think that the wastewater treatment is the most important application that we are uh, interested in because uh, mostly in the wastewater treatment, uh, the, the, uh, the weakness is about the volume. Uh, and uh, in the hydrodynamic cavitation, we don't need, uh, we don't need any, any uh, restriction uh, about the volume because the only uh, dependence of the cavitation is the reservoir that we are uh, connecting to our system. So according to the reservoir volume, we can uh, have the disinfection in the uh, wastewater treatment. Also, it is green energy. We don't uh, use any chemicals in the uh, hydrodynamic cavitation for the wastewater treatment, like colonization or ozonation. And it is easily cooked with different applications. Uh, so, according to our studies, uh, we think that it is more um, uh, closer to the to the applications uh, at a high TRL level, and also other miniature scales, which uh, which are in lower uh, TRL levels, uh, uh, which needs more investigations. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So. Uh, if uh, there is no question. We can go with Dr. Craig. Dr. Craig, could you ask? I mean, could you now please start your presentation? Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Koray Bahadur Donmas. Uh, I'm working at Sunum as a technical specialist since February 2020. 
Uh, as you know, we are working on nanomaterials and their applications in uh, food, agriculture, life, life science, uh, aviation, aerospace industries, and uh, energy storage, energy conversion, and energy efficiency. However, uh, today I will give brief information about uh, our energy research infrastructure, and then I will give uh, information about our resources and services. Uh, we know that uh, energy storage, energy conversion, and energy efficiency are very important fields for nanomaterials. In this context, we have uh, several equipments that prepare our uh, prototypes uh, for energy storage or energy conversion. And we also have several other equipments to uh, use uh, to see uh, how their efficiency are. Uh, for example, a battery uh, supercapacitor or uh, some other type of energy storage systems. We have one uh, glow box uh, which uh, prevents uh, vaporized species to enter the system and then uh, lithium type batteries can easily be prepared with that glow box. On the other hand, we also have uh, battery analyzers, analyzers in different trains, uh, voltage and current trains, and uh, we have several potentiostat galvanostats, uh, and the uh, multi-channel one is generally used for to analyze uh, battery or supercapacitors or uh, other type of energy storage systems. And uh, we are also specialized on uh, polymer electrolyte membrane type fuel cells. Uh, for that reason, we have uh, two uh, test stations, uh, which is generally used to uh, see uh, their uh, fuel cell behaviors. And then we also have uh, one potential stat galvanostat. Uh, this uh, potential stat galvanostat is generally used to see the electrochemical behavior of fuel cells, uh, maybe uh, linear swept voltammetry, uh, cyclic voltammetry, and uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy methods can be used with that system. Uh, polarization curves can be obtained also. And on the other hand, uh, 2D or 3D uh, models uh, for 3D geometries can be prepared by Comsol Multiphysics simulation system. And uh, defects on the system can be defined by that software. And uh, uh, after several restoration and fixing study on the model, uh, Comsol Multiphysics can be still used to see the uh, general behaviors of the fuel cells. And this uh, multi-physics system can also be used for uh, renewable energy systems, like wind turbines, the design of the wind turbines, novel uh, wind turbines. And, and uh, as Dr. Morteza explained, we are also working on energy efficiency and harvesting. Uh, one micro uh, particle image velocimetry system is placed in our uh, laboratory and several other type of screening system systems like thermal camera, high-speed camera are also be used in uh, the studies. Uh, several other equipments are used to uh, support uh, nanomaterial characterization or functionalized nanomaterial characterization like thermal gravimetric analyzer. And on the other hand, uh, several other equipments uh, in the laboratory can be used to uh, prepare nanomaterials or uh, functionalize them, like uh, microwave synthesis reactor. Uh, those are the main equipments in the uh, energy efficiency, efficiency and harvesting uh, studies. Uh, Microparticle image velocity metric system can be seen on the left side, and the heart of the system can be seen in the middle of the page. Uh, there's a little uh, microchip uh, is used to form the cavitation uh, and the bubbling uh, can be screened by uh, different uh, screening system like systems like high speed camera thermal camera and uh, with that screening systems uh, the variables uh, of the uh, cavitation can be defined and be determined i'm not going to give any other uh, detail about energy efficiency and harvesting studies because dr Maltred morteza already explained well but I'm going to give uh, more information about energy storage studies and uh, testing uh, equipment. Uh, as I said, we have one uh, multi-channel potential stat galvanostat, which is generally used to uh, see the electrochemical behaviors of the energy storage systems. Uh, this, uh, for example, when we uh, develop a novel anode material, uh, we would like to see, is there any corrosion CPC or 
uh, how its first cycling ability are uh, abilities, uh, and for that reason, uh, multi-channel potentials that governors that can be used. And uh, sometimes uh, when you add a system uh, and edit it, and you think that uh, additive will improve cycling ability of the battery, in first hand, uh, potential stat or stats can be used. And uh, this system is also combined with uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy method. Uh, with that method, uh, ohmic resistance uh, of the electrolyte or membrane of the battery can be screened. And, uh, cyclic, uh, and charge transfer capability of the anode material or cathode material can be uh, realized with that uh, measurement technique. We, we have one uh, low current interface. Uh, when we uh, combine this uh, interface with one channel of our multi channel potentials that are on steps, we can dive into 4 pico ampere level, uh, which is ultra low for uh, these equipments. And uh, to be honest, this is generally used for uh, sensor application, not for uh, energy storage systems. But we also have that system for your requirements. And as I said, we also have several type of uh, battery analyzers uh, in different voltage and current range. This one is generally used for uh, high voltage and current applications like a vehicle battery cycle. Uh, as I said, we are specialized on polymer electrolyte membrane type fuel cells. Uh, one potential such governance that is used to see the electrochemical behaviors of the fuel cells. Uh, as I said, linear sphere voltammetry, cyclic voltammetry, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy methods can be used to screen the uh, first uh, behaviors of the fuel cells. And uh, we have one test station, uh, which is, uh, I can say for this system, it is almost automated uh, with its uh, thermocouples, hum humidifiers, and uh, back pressure controls. This is uh, also used for the fuel cell tests. In our studies, uh, in first, uh, nanomaterials are produced or functionalized. And after uh, successful characterization with uh, Raman spectroscopy, for example, or sometimes scanning electron microscope, and sometimes uh, equipped with uh, focused ion beam technology, and then uh, batteries uh, prototypes uh, are prepared uh, in global. If the type of the battery uh, is suitable, uh, batteries can be prepared uh, also in outside of the global. And then uh, cyclic charge and discharge tests uh, are carried out with uh, cycling uh, instruments. On the other side, uh, several other parameters can be obtained with potential stat governors, that, as, uh, as I said before, uh, like cyclic voltammetry, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, and something like this. Uh, these are the examples uh, that have been studied in our infrastructure uh, by our researchers. Uh, in the left one, uh, hybrid anode material was produced for lithium ion batteries. The surface of the graphene is coated with silicon nanoparticles and then uh, sandwich-like structures were produced uh, and used as uh, hybrid anode material at lithium-ion batteries and very successful results were obtained with that uh, system. And then uh, on the other side you can see uh, carbon nanofiber composite electrodes were prepared uh, for sodium-ion batteries. Uh, combining with uh, bismuth oxide and carbon nanofiber. Uh, and the electro spinning method was used uh, with that uh, system. Three times uh, higher discharge uh, capacities were uh, obtained uh, with that uh, system when you compare with uh, conventional carbon nanofiber electrodes. And uh, on the other side, uh, polymer composites and nanofibers were produced to use at uh, lithium sulfur batteries and use as uh, electrolyte stabil stabil stabilizer. And uh, very successful results were also obtained with that uh, system. On the other side, uh, reduced graphene oxide uh, combined with carbon nanofiber uh, with microwave uh, method 
and then uh, those were used as uh, electrode material at supercapacitor. On the last example, uh, the surface of the graphene, uh, end of the graphene, is coated with anatas, which is a type, which is a type of uh, titanium. And then uh, the hydrogen storage capability of the system uh, was increased with that additive. So as you see from that slide, we are not working on a single type of battery or single component of a battery. We are working on uh, anode material in one side, while we are working on uh, membrane or uh, cathode material on the other side. And also, we are not working for, for a, just for a lithium ion battery. Uh, we are working on sodium ion battery while we are working on uh, supercapacitors or hydrogen energy storage systems on the other side. Because we know that uh, not a single type of battery will dominate all the energy storage markets. So for that reason, we are working on different systems. Uh, similar examples can be uh, given for uh, fuel cells, especially for polymer electrolyte uh, membrane type fuel cells. Uh, in first, uh, after uh, prepare uh, novel material or functionalize them, uh, Fuel cell is assembled by uh, sandwiching the gas diffusion electrodes with polymer. And sandwich-like uh, system is installed to the uh, fuel cell test station. And then uh, test station is used to see uh, the electrochemical behaviors, polarization curves uh, of the system. Uh, these are the two, uh, two examples that have been studied in our infrastructure by our researchers. In the first example, novel uh, catalyzed material uh, were produced for uh, gas diffusion electrodes. In conventional systems, uh, in fuel cells, uh, platinum is used as catalyzed material, which is very expensive, as you know. Uh, with that studies, uh, novel catalyzed uh, material uh, for electrodes were produced and successfully used on the fuel cells. On the other side, uh, grafted uh, polymeric membranes were produced and uh, successfully used on the uh, polymeric electrolyte membrane type fuel cells. And the last example uh, about uh, Compson multiphysics studies, uh, as I said, we, are, we can create 2D or 2, 3D models for 3D geometries and numerical analysis can be carried out. And defects on the system can be determined by that uh, simulation systems and uh, some optimizations, uh, optimization studies can be uh, carried out with that simulation system. And as, as I said, uh, the best thing in our uh, infrastructure, uh, real sample analysis can be carried out to validate our uh, simulation studies. Uh, those are several other examples that have been studied in our uh, center. Uh, for example, novel uh, designs for point tubing and uh, nanomaterials were used for energy efficient, uh, efficient buildings. And on the other side, uh, nanomaterials were used for thermogliedic systems in the name of uh, their uh, energy efficiency. And uh, those are the ongoing projects in uh, our uh, center. And the first one is an internet project uh, which is financially supported by uh, both Tibetan and uh, European Commission. And this project is about hybrid energy storage systems. And uh, uh, several other projects are also uh, managed in our center. And the last one, uh, 2244 project, is, an, uh, is a good example for our, uh, for our center uh, industrial relation. Uh, in that project, uh, PhD students of uh, industrial partner will be uh, trained uh, depending on the research field of the industrial partner. And then after their graduation, uh, they will be employed on the industrial partner. And still uh, in that period of time, project will be gone. So uh, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, uh, I will try to answer. Dr. Okrai, thank you for this great presentation. Thank you very uh, much. I just didn't notice that Mr. Mohammed uh, raised a question for Dr. Morteza. But before that, uh, are there any questions for the last presentation to Dr. Okrai? 
Okay, then uh, is one minute. Is he still there? Okay. Uh, he uh, said, I, I will stop share, uh, Mr. Matt. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you very so much. Let me, okay, you're welcome. Yeah. Hello, uh, my name is Muhammad Tatul. Uh, yes. I, uh, uh, I have a question for the film of Okay. Uh, uh, <clears throat> you are depending on the geometry to create the, the cavitations. Correct? Yes, yes. So uh, uh, the cavitation itself uh, uh, creates uh, uh, an excess of heat and corrosion. W wouldn't that uh, uh, destroy the structure you, you are creating the cavitations within? Uh, actually, after the time, yes. But, but uh, the, uh, one of the uh, features of our um, applications and one of the strongest uh, feature of our uh, studies is that the um, all of these experiments are done in a very short time. For example, in the bacteria, the, this, this uh, uh, removal we just uh, did all the experiments in ten minutes, and also the cost of all these microfluidic devices are very low. So uh, we don't put lots of money for the fabrication of the micro. Yeah. Yes, for so that would would make it unusable in the in the, in an, an application in the real life because you have to replace it every uh, few days or something like that. It it depends on the material that is using. If we want to uh, switch from the laboratory studies to the industrial, of course, we don't need to have the same materials which we are using in the, uh, in the laboratory. For example, in the laboratory scale, we are using silicon and glass wafers because we want to see the uh, cavitating flow inside the channel. We want to characterize the flow inside the channel. So mostly we need to, to have transparent features. But if we want to switch it to the industrial, if we want to make it a scale up, of course, different materials which can withstand uh, uh, more uh, pressures, which can withstand uh, the erosion. Uh, it is another part of our study to, to, to investigate the erosion potential of the, um, of the devices according to the microscale cavitation. Therefore, it can be changed according to the uh, system that is uh, working. And as I said, it is not very uh, expensive. So. Uh, it, it can be replaced uh, by, by other uh, cheap uh, devices in order to, to, to have operational. Okay, thank you. Okay, and so if, are there any questions? Uh, uh, are you noticing any other raising hands? Okay, then I would like to thank first to the presenters, Dr. Morteza and Dr. Kray, and also thank you for all audience for listening and joining us. Uh, hope to meeting other webinars. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Thank you very much, Mr. Bye. -bye.